Hey guys, and welcome to the first week of MGF 2351 International Business. My name is Dr. Andy Kavanagh, and I'll have the distinct pleasure of teaching you guys and talking to you guys over the coming 12 or so weeks. As our friends on the slide here are telling you, it is international business time. And today we're going to go through, of course, an introduction to both the unit overall as well as the general topic of international business before moving on to the related issues associated with globalization, a notion that you'd be familiar with and certainly would have heard of, but maybe not so much in the context of what we're going to study in this unit. In terms of today's content, first of all, we're going to go through and introduce the unit, as I say. We're going to run through the course details, all the important things that you guys can need to know, including those all important assessment details, before moving on to the actual formal lecture content for this week. And as I say, that's going to firstly involve looking at what is international business. Obviously, that's going to be quite important given the topic of the unit. Secondly, how does international business differ from domestic business? Seems quite straightforward and obvious, but we're going to point out those important differences and what that means for you guys studying this unit before thirdly moving on to the key and equally important notion of globalization. In the uh, famous words of Austin Powers, allow myself to introduce myself. Yes, the guy who is going to be running the unit for this semester is this little guy who, yes, you may be able to tell, grew up to look like him. That is me. That is Dr. Andy Kavanagh. I am based here at the Caulfield campus uh, in building N up on level 7, the penthouse suite as I like to call it, in room 33. You are more than welcome to come and see me I was going to say any time you like, but any time as long as we have booked an appointment. I don't have set consultation hours as such. I like to be as flexible as possible so we can work at a time that suits both myself, but more importantly, you as well. So I don't have a couple of hours a week. I can make any appointment that works for the two of us. With that in mind, I always suggest that students contact me first so that we can set up a time that works for both of us. I have listed my office phone there, so you're more than welcome to give me a call. I won't always guarantee that I will actually be in my office, so, so the perhaps the safer bet will be to email me. So shoot me an email with that uh, email address you can see there, uh, and we can organize a time that suits the both of us. In terms of your workshop facilitators, I am lucky enough to be taking a couple of classes this semester, and you have four other, I was going to say equally capable, but I would say even more capable than I am, uh, facilitators who will be taking you through the next 12 weeks in your face-to-face -face classes. You will meet them uh, starting in week one when our workshops begin. I always say if you do have a question it's best to ask your facilitator first and then come to me as the lecturer or chief examiner second. The reason why I say that is because they are the ones who are going to be teaching you every week and they are also the ones who are likely to be marking your assignments so they're going to be best placed to answer any specific requirements or questions, queries that you may have for them. Alright, so before moving on to the course details, I thought it was important just to highlight what makes me uh, or what gives me the right to be sitting in this position talking to you guys as I am right now. I've actually come through a quite similar experience to, I suspect, a number of you guys who are listening to me at the minute. Certainly in terms of my degrees, I did a Bachelor of Business in a double degree in Management and Marketing, just like I suspect a number of you guys listening are uh, did, uh, or are doing right now rather. I then went on to do my honours degree here at Monash uh, within the management discipline before then undertaking an, a PhD in international business. So if, one of the great things about doing uh, a study within business and especially management, uh, it is so broad and it gives you so many different options and, and sort of outlets where you can end up and certainly that's, I didn't know I was going to end up here but it's been a path that I'm very glad I came down. My current research in interests are obviously relating to international business and in particular things like multinational enterprise strategy and the relationship between subsidiaries and head offices. Foreign direct investment and things like corporate entrepreneurship rather are also things that I do research about and some of the things that we will touch on over the duration of this unit. In terms of my personal interests, I will apologise in advance now for the numerous 
car references that do appear throughout the semester. I do love cars. That there on the right of your screen is my pride and joy, my 1966 Mustang GT. She does occasionally visit here in the multi-level car park on Caulfield. If you do see her, say hi and be gentle. She is a fragile old lady at this age. Uh, I do. I am also a drummer in the greatest band that you guys have never heard of, named Vesperlin. That is me there in my most characteristic drumming pose. I will again try to hold back on the Vesperlin references, as I will with the St Kilda Football Club references. I am a mad Saint supporter, so hopefully, I don't tie you to death with those constant references to some of my favourite things. In terms of this unit specifically, there are three key learning outcomes that by the time you finish your 12 weeks here in this semester, we would like you to be able to demonstrate. Firstly, we were hoping that you guys would be able to classify the key features and issues in the global environment in which international business takes place. It's something that you guys will, even if you do not continue to focus on international business in your studies, it will be something you will be dealing with once you go out into the workplace, whether you realise it or not. So it is quite important. Secondly, we're going to be hoping that you guys can explain the impact that the environment has on the internationalisation process of a business organisation, how it expands overseas. And thirdly, demonstrating an understanding of the role of entry mode choice and other strategic issues in order to succeed in international business. Coincidentally, these three learning outcomes are vitally important for your final end of semester report. And we're going to go through that in a minute. Now, some of you may be sitting here listening to this lecture or this video and already wondering how is international business going to be valuable or useful or even interesting to me? And it's a valid question, certainly for those of you who are not focusing on international business in your major, for example, it may be a question that you are asking yourself right now. If that is the case, I have a few questions for you guys. Firstly, do you enjoy travelling or would you like to travel overseas? Do you purchase anything online through, uh, through online sites? And thirdly, would you, somewhere down the track at least, like to work for a large multinational company? If you answered yes to even just one of those questions, then international business is for you. You may not quite get as excited as our, our friend Tyra here, but it will at least be valuable to you, as we will hopefully demonstrate over the next 12 weeks. In this unit, we look at international the, the international activities of firms, as well as the implications for people like you who are likely to work within them. It's useful for you, therefore, when you do, as your will, get a job after uni. Having developed this knowledge about how uh, firms need to operate in the global environment, you will be a valuable, knowledgeable asset for your firm in whichever industry they compete, because as we'll talk about throughout the semester, almost every industry these days is competing on an international scale. Secondly, the cases in this unit that we will be going through are based around interesting companies that you do deal with every single day in your life. Hopefully, especially as we go through the workshop activities and even the assessments, you'll be able to relate these key theories and concepts with, from international business to actual things that you're encountering in your day-to-day -day lives. All right, a bit of information about the unit format. This unit is a flipped unit, which means there are no face-to-face -face lectures. You're not expected to come here and sit and listen to somebody talk. You are able to do that in the convenience of your own time, wherever you'd like to do it, as long as you're listening to these videos. So we do have online content which substitutes for what used to be lectures. This means that every week there is content or information that we put up for you guys on the Moodle site for you to either read or listen to. The slides and the accompanying videos videos that you see, like this one, are made available on the Moodle site at least by the Friday before the corresponding week. So obviously the week two content will be up by the Friday of week one. I will endeavour to actually get that up for you by the Wednesday of each week so you have a few more extra days in which to review the content before you actually go through it face to face in your workshops the following week. There are additional resources and materials, things like videos, quizzes, readings that are also going to be put up there for you under each week's corresponding tab on the Moodle site. 
Attending workshops is so, so important if you want to pass the unit. Every single semester we have students fail this unit because they haven't come to class. So give yourself the best chance to do really well, whether that's passing or hopefully for all of you getting HDs, by actually making sure you do attend those workshops. Certainly there will be assignment hints that are given in your workshops. They will be much more friendly than any class with our friend Dean Pritchard here, I promise. Whoever you is your workshop facilitator, they will take you through and give you some very, very valuable tips as to how you can do well if you do attend those workshops. Looking more specifically at them, they do commence in week one. Unfortunately, guys, I can't guarantee that Channing Tatum will go on a 21 Jump Street style rant in the classes, but I guarantee that they will be interesting and certainly important for your assessments. They're designed around what is called active learning, which is learning that is co-produced by both us as teachers, but also, and perhaps more importantly, by you guys as the students. You will be driving your leading and we will be there to guide you through it. There will be discussion questions, case studies, newspaper articles, things that you'll be dealing with every day in your life that we will be relating and linking to the unit of international business. And you will certainly be expected to interact and take part in these types of activities during your workshops. You are expected to attend these and must prepare every week by reviewing the Moodle content prior to attending them. Failure to do so will absolutely impact on your ability to not only do well, but potentially even pass the unit. As I say, every semester we have students who don't pass because they just haven't been there to get the necessary grades and even the hints to do well in their assessments. It's even more important because from weeks 5 to 7 and then subsequently 9 to 11, there will be 20 minute student group presentations that occur in the workshop. So obviously you need to be there for those. There's also corresponding peer assessment tasks that are completed again in the workshops. And finally, multiple choice quizzes, which are held in the two weeks of four and eight. Obviously, you're going to need to be there from effectively four all the way through to week 11 to be able to actually get the marks that you need to do well in the unit. All right, quickly whizzing through the unit resources that we would like you guys to have access to. Firstly, we do have a prescribed text for the unit. You don't have to go through page by page like our feline friend here, but you will need to be able to go through the readings to review for your assessments and certainly uh, have access at least, if not have outright ownership of your each individual text when you come to the workshop. So even if you don't buy it yourself, I do understand that textbooks are hugely expensive these days. But even try to arrange a situation where you can either share one between a partner or a group. You will need them, I can guarantee, in class in your workshops. There is also a reading list for the unit. It's located in a nice convenient little link on the Moodle site for you. And those readings there, we've deliberately chosen for you guys because they are useful for your weekly topics, which in turn means that they'll be quite useful for your assignments. So do have a look at those as well. Our minimum expectation is that you are able to view the online content and readings of the relevant chapters and additional readings each week prior to the workshop. Students fail every single semester because they are unable or choose not to do that. So please make sure that you're preparing yourself every week before you come to your workshop. All readings have been selected especially for each week's topic and can be used to source material in your assignments. We actually encourage you to do that. We're giving you these resources and, and journal articles in particular to use in your assignments. You, the better you understand those, the much more you'll get out of the workshops and in turn, the easier your assignments are gonna to be to complete.